All right, today I'm going to fill, I'm going to make another couple loaves of French bread, and I'm going to shape these a little differently from the last ones. Or one of them, anyway. I'm going to make one to a one to the batard shape I filmed last time, but the for the first I'm going to make into a into a bowl, a you know a round kind of like you would just be suitable to make a bread bowl out of. So to do that, you cut the dough in. It, it's you know a large a large batch of dough again, so I cut it in into roughly equal halves, pat into a rectangle like you do for the batard. Now, unlike that, for the bowl, you bring the corners into the center. Pinch that all together, flip it over, and stretch the dough so it forms a nice surface tension. And the reason you do this is because if you if you form surface tension and pinch the bottom together, it will um, it will create a surface tension film on the dough on the dough and let the bread rise up instead of just out. So it rises into a nice tall round shape instead of just becoming a big flat piece of re uh, flat bread. Well, it wouldn't exactly be flat bread; it'd be risen, but it would have no shape. And that will rise fairly significantly before it goes in the oven. And this one I'm going to make into a torpedo shape like before. And just as the reminder, pat that into a rectangle and fold like you would a letter. Top to the center, bottom over the top, pinch the seam, and rock this back and forth until it gets to the length you want. Pinch the ends together, flip it seam side down to rise. That's all there is to that. And this is an onion herb ciabatta. I screwed up by not filming the dough preparation yesterday because most of the work of this goes into there because with ciabatta, ciabatta is a very thin and sticky dough so you, can't, you have to handle that with oil instead of flour and you stretch and fold to build surface tension the way I did it in the bolet, only more so. Four or five times, in fact. And with every stretch and fold to make the onion and herb, you put an onion and herb mixture on the dough and stretch and fold the dough over it. So, I'm gonna cut this in half. There you are. Hello. I'm filming. So, I'm, yeah, cut this in half and Trying to handle it as little as possible so I don't degas it. The whole point is of ciabatta is you know big bubbles. And... So I have to be very careful handling this. Yeah. I get this into a rectangle, and I fold it in thirds like you do with a batard, only you don't apply any pressure to it. Because, again, you don't want to degas the thing. Just a little flour. Do I like seam side up or seam side down? Yeah, I put, I put this in flour. Gently lift it with both hands. And I go over to, I don't have a way to move the camera, but I have a, I have a uh, peel dust ooh, lined with parchment paper and I take this over there and put it on there seam side down I'll bring the peel over here to show it to you I repeat the same process with this one Just 
gently fold. I'm going to do this the other way because this side is more intact. Gently fold. Cradle in both hands and transfer to the baking surface. And this is what it looks like when they are ready to go to rise. And this is a step that I forgot to film last time, which is scoring the dough. I mentioned that in the previous uh, video. So, to score the dough, you take a sharp, preferably serrated knife, or you can use a razor blade if you want. And you put it about a 45 degree angle to the bread, and you make shallow cuts at, an, at that angle into the surface of the dough. And again, the reason you do this is to because when the dough ri when the, when this goes into the oven, it's going to try it's going to rise more if, uh, with oven spring, and because of the surface tension on the outside of the dough, this will split the crust if you don't do this. Those, so these slices will bloom open in the oven instead of breaking up the whole bread. And the, the shape of the scoring doesn't really matter. For this bolet, I'm going to just put one down each side so I get a nice square cut across the top. And the cuts don't meet, it's just they're in a square pattern. And that is all there is to that. And these ciabattas here have been rising for a good while, and at this stage, remember we rested them seam side down, so now we are going to really flour our hands in the tops of the doughs, because this is really sticky. Gently lift up the bread, roll it over so that it is now seam side up and coax it to the length we want, but it's already about there, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Same with the other one, this one wound up bigger, so it's going to be harder. I'm thinking maybe I should split these up into two, into two different uh, pans and bake them separately, they're getting so big. They're already about the size we want, so flour that, and you try to pat it into about a rectangle, so it's rectangular rather than oblong. It's just a, an aesthetics thing. And this is the bread fresh out of the oven. As you can see, the uh, bowl puffed up much bigger than it was before in the oven. And this is the ciabatta. It is filled with, it's stuffed with an onion and herb mixture, uh, onions sauteed in olive oil, and uh, spice with salt, pepper, and oregano and basil. And uh, marinated in balsamic vinegar. So this usually turns out, this is usually pretty popular at the feast I'm baking it for. So we'll see.